of by how much. It is a massive win. 126 points. It's the biggest sound ever. Essendon's round 23 loss to GWS last season summed up the back end of their year. From round 17 onwards, they won just two games, barely beating North Melbourne and West Coast. But they did avenge the matchup this season, and more importantly, sit well in the hunt not only for finals, but a top four finish. They are the wildcard team that has shot up in the early part of 2024. However, people are still doubting the Bombers, but it's fair enough. In 2023, they were fifth at the end of round 17, and were just a game outside of fourth place. At this stage, who knows if the fatigue of the year and injury will cause a similar fall off, but all we can judge is the evidence in front of us. A fair bit has changed at the hangar, and many of the positives of last season have carried on and expanded. All of the change starts during the off season. Where do you see the next level of growth for the group into next year? Yeah, I think the level of commitment and uh, drive needs to continue to improve and uh, that's on the coaches and the senior players to keep educating everyone to ensure that we're all in as a group and um, you know, but no doubt there's going to be a lot of a lot of challenges player to player come this off season and pre-season. The captain set the tone. The club has said before that the training standards and prep needed to improve but it was clear in Merritt's body language and tone things had to change after their round 24 loss last season to Collingwood. So far, so good. A group of the players in the off season spent money out of their own pockets and headed over to the United States. Now I wasn't a fan of all the photos and videos of them putting in the work, but clearly it has helped develop a number of the players. From this photo, it's fair to say Kyle Langford, Andrew McGrath, Sam Durham, Jai Caldwell, Archie Perkins, Jay Gresham and Jaden Laverde are all having career best seasons. It's money well spent. David Rath also joined the club as game strategy manager and keeping Daniel Giansa Rakuza and Blake Carousella, two potential senior coaches, meant the coaching and development department at the club has quietly become one of the most deeply talented groups in the entire competition. The overall culture and team spirit at Essendon has never been higher. This does go back to 2023 as well. Even though the team fell off, Brad Scott did get the improvement he wanted. He said it would take time, but his leadership and understanding of how to create a strong environment is currently on display. In basically two off seasons, he has shifted the narrative from Essendon being a clumsy club to one of stability and strength. The way he talks in such a surety with little panic is so refreshing compared to the previous coaches in Ben Rutten and John Worsfold. That level of calm clearly has spread to Captain Zach Merritt and Vice Captain Andrew McGrath, who are both setting the standard on and off the field. Unlike Worsfold, who had an open approach to training and team standards, and Rutten, who at times looked overwhelmed, this version of Essendon demands you buy in, train hard, and become a part of the team rather than an individual worrying about themselves. It's night and day from the past iterations of the Bombers. But the biggest switch up everyone can see is the players on the field. You can coach all you want and have a great culture, but having talent is important. Once again, it feels like Essendon has quietly built up a great stock of youngsters and players in their prime. We have to start with the four recruits who all get five stars. Todd Goldstein as a free agent has not only covered Sam Draper, but looks a level above him. He's consistent and dependable, which is all you really need from a ruckman. Xavier Dersmer is out now, but every game he played, he seemed to grow more confidence and get some of his swagger back. He is a natural winger, and his 2024 has been his highest rated season ever. Hopefully, he can get back soon. Then there is Jade Gresham. 15 disposals and a goal per game is exactly what the Bombers forward line needed. His pressure acts are at an all-time high for his career, but he does have that bit of quality that others don't. Fullback Ben Mackay has been a godsend. Even without Jordan Ridley, 
Essendon's defence has dramatically improved and it is mainly because of Mackay. Structurally, he sets them up so well and he can defend one-on-one -on -one and still intercept the ball. Currently, he is a higher rated key defender than Darcy Moore, Jacob Wiedering and Alex Pearce. Not even the most optimistic Bomber fan could see all four recruits having this much impact early on. The rest comes down to the sudden improvement of a handful of players. Sam Durham has almost doubled his player rating from last season and has rapidly developed as another crucial cog in the Bombers midfield. His last five games have seen him attend at least 60% of the centre bounces and his aerial work has been a feature too. He is the ultimate diamond in the rough. Jai Caldwell is also having a career season as a high half forward and on baller. He seems to be playing with an aggression and physicality that has never been a feature in his game before. His 5.8 tackles per game proves this and is also a career high. Nick Martin in defence gives them drive while easing the pressure on Mason Redman, while Andrew McGrath has become one of the best small defenders in the competition. These are just a few of the names, but if you look across the entire Essendon team over the year, 90% of them are playing better than they were last season. For the remainder of the year, Essendon play just five sides currently in the top eight. They still have games against Richmond, North Melbourne and West Coast as well. Nine of their last 14 fixtures will be against the bottom eight sides. Now it's still unlikely they'll win all these games because of the nature of the AFL, but it looks like the perfect setup to make top four. But it's really in a couple months time that we'll see the true colours of this Essendon outfit. I've mentioned a whole bunch of positives to this point, but the last one in the home and away season is how they handle the last couple months and the general fatigue that develops. If they get a heavy injury toll, then so be it. But if they are fairly healthy, then this year there are no excuses for a collapse. The fixture is in their favour and they can take advantage. Only time will tell if they do. Overall, it feels like people are now slowly starting to buy stocks in Essendon. If their current record was, say, Collingwood's, everyone would be a believer, but because of the past, there is a lag in buy-in. It's similar to the Richmond 2017 season. Everyone asked if their form was real, could they keep it up, and will they be able to perform when it matters most? You can argue these questions still apply for Essendon, but they have done about as much as you can in the first part of 2024.